Now, before we get into the video, I created this video before this announcement from Cisco. Cisco have announced that the Viral2 name is gonna be replaced with the name CMLP, or Cisco Modeling Labs Personal Edition. So I'll be using the name Viral2 in this video because I recorded it before this name change. I'll probably still use that name by mistake because it'll take me a while to get used to the new name, CMLP. So just be aware that I've recorded this video before the product has been released. I've got a pre-release version of Cisco Viral or CML Personal Edition. Okay, so let's get started. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the Viral 2 breakout tool, which I think is a fantastic feature in Cisco Viral. One of the things that the Viral developers have done really well in Cisco Viral 2 is that you only have to open port 443 on the Viral server. In other words, you only have to permit SSL or TLS traffic to the Viral server. You can close all other ports on your firewalls and only permit that one port, but, how do I Telnet, as an example, or SSH from this Windows computer to my Viral server if I've locked down all the ports except port 443? Well, that's where this local breakout tool gets used. What it allows me to do basically is set up PuTTY sessions, so Telnet sessions, to a local proxy server running on my laptop, and then that proxies or tunnels the session to the Viral server using TLS. So in this example, I'm running the Cisco Viral server on my Mac within VMware Fusion. I'm going to run the local breakout tool on the Windows computer, install a piece of software on the Windows computer that sets up this proxy, Telnet using PuTTY on my Windows computer to this breakout tool, which then basically tunnels my session using TLS or HTTPS to the Viral server. So I can load this Viral server on a server somewhere or in the cloud, and all I need to permit is port 443 to that Viral server. I can set up my console sessions or my VNC sessions to the Viral server and only allow port 443. So again, basically the breakout tool is a piece of software that I install on my client. It runs locally. I download that software from the Viral server, install it locally, and then when I set up a session using PuTTY as an example to my local host, it tunnels the session using TLS to the consoles of devices running within Viral. I think this is a fantastic feature once again, because all I need to permit on my firewalls is port 443. All other ports can be blocked and I only permit HTTPS traffic to my Viral server, but I can still connect to multiple consoles on the Viral server using this local breakout application running locally on my PC. Okay, so let's get started and I'll show you how to set this up on a Windows computer where I've got the breakout tool on Windows, the Viral server on a Mac. The breakout application is supported on Windows, Mac, and Linux. Let's go. Okay, so once again, Cisco Viral is running in VMware Fusion on my Mac. I'm gonna connect to the Viral server from my Windows computer. But just to make the recordings easier for me, I'm gonna be controlling that Windows computer using VNC from my Mac but I am recording locally on the Windows computer so you can see what I'm doing. So firstly, on my Mac, my Viral server has booted, has IP address 192.168.1.102. Now I'm not currently in my studio in the UK. I'm in South Africa, currently in lockdown because of this virus. These two devices are connected to this little wireless router. So the laptop is connecting via wireless to the Viral server via this little router. Okay, so the Viral server has been given IP address 192.168.1.102 via DHCP. Now, one of the things I like about Viral is can use DHCP. I haven't got a client that's configured to talk to the Viral server that has to have a static IP address. This can change while I'm traveling. It's not a problem. Okay, so on Windows, I'm going to open Google Chrome and I'm gonna to browse to that IP address, 
viral prompt is displayed, I'm gonna log in with my username, admin, password, Cisco123. Now I've shown you in previous videos, such as this one, how to get viral working. So I'm not gonna show you that here again. I'm assuming in this example that you've got viral up and running. So under tools, I'm going to go to breakout tool and I'm told briefly what the breakout utility does. So the viral to breakout utility provides users connectivity to device console ports that are operating in a lab environment. It acts like a local terminal server that embeds the various serial ports lines into a single HTTPS connection. Console access is done via Telnet and the graphics frame buffer is accessed via the VNC protocol. So we can use our favorite terminal emulators here such as PuTTY or SecureCRT to access viral devices. Okay, so I'm gonna scroll right down to the bottom of this page and I'm going to download this breakout utility for Windows. As you can see, once again, they've got a Linux utility and a Mac OS utility, but I'm only interested in the Windows utility. I wanna keep that executable. Okay, so typically you would double click on an executable to start it, but that's not what we're going to do here. What I'm gonna do is open up a command prompt. I'm gonna to go to my downloads directory. DRR shows me that the application is available in my downloads directory. If I run the application without any options, I get help information and I'm told to use either config init run or UI. UI is the easiest option to use and that's what I'm gonna use here to show you how to get this application working. So what I need to do is run that executable with the UI option. So I'm gonna clear the screen, run the application again, but use UI. And as you can see, we told that the system cannot find this lab's YAML file, but it's running a server on the loopback address port 8080. Okay, so the next step is to browse using HTTP to the local host port 8080. Now you may get an error here, but don't worry too much about that. What we need to do is configure the breakout tool to use HTTPS. Make sure that you use HTTPS and then the IP address of the viral server. So back on my Mac, viral server IP address is 192.168.1.102. So on the Windows computer, I'm gonna configure it to use HTTPS 192.168.1.102. I'm not going to verify the certificate because I'm using a self-signed certificate here. Now you can populate all the nodes if you want to. Basically, when you enable this, it fetches all available nodes from the controller. Otherwise, only started nodes will be included. So you could specify whether you wanna include all or only started nodes. For the moment, I'll only include started nodes. The username that I'm using is admin. Password is gonna be Cisco123. Console start port, I'm gonna leave everything at defaults and I'm gonna click save. The configuration has now been saved, but what you need to do now, four things to work, is you need to shut down the application. So back in my console, you can see a bunch of stuff has been happening. I'm gonna press Control C to stop the application, and then I'm gonna run it again. So if you make changes through the GUI, you need to stop the application and then start it up again. You can use a config or CLI option, which is more powerful, but we're not gonna do it that way. We're gonna keep things simple. Okay, it says empty lab list, suggest to refresh list from controller. So if I click refresh there, nothing happens, but notice this option, refresh lab data from controller. Now we're seeing no data, and that's probably because we have no nodes started on the viral server. Notice nothing has started here. I see three devices, but they all stopped. Here are three devices, they all stopped. So what I'll do is start my ASA lab. So as you can see, these three devices are now starting up. So back on the breakout tool, if I press refresh, okay, so I can see my ASA lab. 
This is the ID. Here's the title. I need to enable the lab. So make sure you click on this and then you can click on the lab. I can see that this serial port is connected. This serial port is connected and this serial port is connected. I can see the port numbers that I need to use to access the devices. I can see those port numbers are enabled. So all I need to do now is open up PuTTY or my favorite terminal emulation application. So you could use Secure CRT for this if you wanted to, but I'll just use PuTTY to make it simple. And all I need to do now is connect to localhost, so my local computer, using Telnet on port 9000. So that's the port that should connect me to my Cisco ASA. I'm gonna click open. And notice when I press enter, I've connected to the ASA running in Cisco Viral. Now, just to prove the point, I'm gonna jump back to my Mac. So on my Mac, I'm gonna open Chrome. A viral is running once again on this local Mac. I'm gonna to browse to 192.168.1.102, which is my viral server. Login is admin Cisco123. Go to my ASA lab. So here's my ASA lab. And I'll connect to the console of my ASA. Okay, so I'm recording now on my Mac. Notice you'll see the output on the PuTTY session as well as the console session running within my web browser on my Mac. I'll jump back to the PC now. So show interface summary as an example. So I typed the command show interface summary back on my Mac in Chrome. I can see the output of that command. So basically this breakout tool is authenticating remote sessions. It's encrypting the traffic and it's multiplexing sessions together. So let's go back to the Windows computer just to show you what's possible. So once again, that's my ASA. What I'll do is open a new PuTTY session. So new session. And I'll connect to the first router. So localhost port 9001 using Telnet. Click open and notice there I'm connected to router one. Back on my Mac, if I click on the first router, I see the same output on both consoles. I see it in PuTTY and I see it on my Mac console running within my browser. Back on the Windows computer, notice what I've got here is I've got a PuTTY session to my router and I've got a PuTTY session to my ASA. So let's start a new session. The connection is port 9003 on the local host. So 9003 is Telnet. I'm gonna to Telnet to my local host and click open. And what you'll notice is I have connected to router two. So I'm telnetting to a local server running on this Windows computer, which is then proxying those sessions across TLS to the viral server running on my Windows computer. So because none of us believe what the developers tell us, let's run Wireshark and let's capture traffic on the wireless network. So Wi-Fi network, let's see if we can see Telnet traffic. Notice there's no Telnet traffic, even though I'm Telnetting to this router on Cisco Viral. So I could type my passwords, etc. That information is hidden because it's not using Telnet. But if I search TLS, I can see a lot of traffic between two IP addresses, 192.168.101 and 192.168.102. So I can see all this traffic going between these two IP addresses. We can see it's transport layer security, TLS 1.2. Traffic is encrypted, however, HTTP over TLS, all of this is encrypted. So I can't see the actual traffic here. It's been encrypted from that PC to this PC. 
And just to prove it once again, notice the Windows computer has IP address 192.168.1.101. And if I jump back to my viral interface, IP address is 192.168.1.101. So it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. Another test we can do is let's stop the breakout tool. So I'm gonna simply press Control C on the breakout tool. And if I refresh this page in my browser, nothing's gonna happen because the local proxy has been stopped. And on my PuTTY sessions, notice I'm losing my PuTTY sessions. PuTTY sessions are disconnected. I've lost my connections to the viral devices because I've closed or stopped the local breakout tool. Now I can still access devices directly using my web browser. So I could open up a console and go and access the devices through my web browser. But if you wanna use an application such as Secure CRT or Solar Putty where you can have multiple tabs, then the local breakout tool is great. It allows you to access the devices in your viral server using TLS or HTTPS using a local application such as Secure CRT or Solar Putty. So basically, once again, you're telnetting to a local proxy server, which then tunnels your traffic using TLS across the internet or whatever link you're using to get you to your viral server. Okay, so I'm hoping you enjoyed this demonstration. If you did, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Please like this video and please click on the bell to get notifications when I post a new video. I'm David Bombal. I want to wish you all the very best.